Hi, this is Darcy Small from OnlinePCWizard.com and we're back again today to continue our Debian 6 squeeze install. Well actually we've installed it on the system already, we have a working system and what I want to do now is configure remote access to the system. So, what we're going to do is, since this is a VM that I'm running, what I need to do is install the VMware tools. So, in this environment or in this situation, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to manually mount the drive. And I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. Okay, if I go to the top of the window in VM, here it says install VMware tools. So I'm going to click install VMware tools. Here it says mount the virtual CD drive in the guest. Now this is all going to do virtually. Just need to hit install. But I've, as you can see here, I've already uncompressed and loaded the file and what's not. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that. So we can be on the same page. Here. I'm going to delete um, delete those two folders. Double check. Okay, that's gone. Now, to see what if the disk has been already mounted, because in in Linux you need to manually mount the disk unless you state in the F FS tab, the file system tab in the etc directory that it that the drive is to auto mount. Okay, let's double check that with the mount command. Okay, I'm not seeing it. In my instance, my DVD ROM or my CD ROM is going to be dev sr0. Okay, now if I just do ls a list on the dev directory, which is the device the devices directory, you'll see a load of a list of different devices, console, disk, what's not, DVD, but I actually know that mine usually is SR0. So what I'm going to do is I can mount, I need to take this device file and then mount it at a location. So what I'm going to do is usually they you usually mount things in say your mount directory okay there is it nothing is inside of my mount directory but I'm actually going to just for this instance I'm going to create a directory inside of mount and call it VMware VMware DVD okay make directory and let's say M and T in that in the mount directory MNT and then I'm going to say VMware DVD okay echo the exit status that did successfully alright now let me go ahead and mount dev slash SRO MNT VMware DVD okay Okay, mount block device dev SRO zero sorry is right protected mount in read only. That's fine because it's not a disk that we have to burn or we have to copy data to. We just need to read from it, which is fine which is fine in our circumstances. Okay, now let's see what's inside of this directory. MNT slash V. Get accustomed to using your tab your tab completion and here we are we have the two files so what I want to do now is I want to extract this file onto into my home directory so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a copy of it copy it actually let's go into the fo folder first copy MNT to Okay. 
So we're going to copy that there. Omit in directory. Actually. Okay, let's see if that did successfully. Great. Now, let's see what we have. Okay, VMware DVD. Let's go into VMware DVD. Search again. Wonderful. So, what we need to do now is uncompress this file. Now, this file has is called a tarball, and as you can see, .tar, and at the end it says .gzip, which is a tarball, but it has been compressed using the gun zip compression utility. Okay, now we can do all of the extracting in one program called tar and I'll show you the command T A R X V F Z. Now what those four letters are gonna do, that's gonna extract all the files verbosely and put them inside of the named folder and extract it using the gun zip and X. The gun zip utility which is what the Z is for. Okay, VM as you can see we're un we're uncompressing now. This shouldn't take too long. Usually you would install VMware tools if you are in a GUI environment or you have a Windows manager running but I'm just going to walk you through it install this install of it which at the same time will show you how to mount your mount a CD-ROM or mount a disk and there's other performance performance gains that you you get after installing the VMware tools okay LS let's see what we have we need to go into VMware tools that's distrib folder so we're going to cd into that vm tab see what we have okay now what we need to do now is we need to run the vmware dash install dash pl so to run that what we're going to do is let's just double check and see that it's an executable yes it is okay wonderful so let's do dot slash vm hit enter installing vmware tools in which directory do you want to install it usually most of these you just hit enter for you hit yes for okay user bin yes contains the init directories that's true init scripts yes yes does not exist currently this program is going to create it yes go ahead with it alright this might just take a while in which directory do you want to install the documentation files and that's a fine by default Okay, it completed successfully. You can decide to remove this software from your system at any time. Alright, now that's in the user bin directory, so that is in your path. Or that should be inside of your path. We can check that later. And by path, I mean your environmental path, so that you would not have to actually type user slash user slash bin. You can just type the VMware uninstall dash tools dash pl. Okay, you need to configure it by invoking the command. Do you want to do this? Yes, most certainly. Now remember, this is not a necessity, but there's certain performance gains that you get from doing this and what's not. So, and keep in mind or bear in mind that every extra program, every extra application you install onto a machine that's another application that you need to keep up to date and you have to make sure all your security updates are current and your programs aren't okay the path is not valid to the GCC library would you like to change it yes 
Okay, speaking of this, what we need to do is we need to install make GCC and the kernel headers. Okay, let Let's go to no actually you should have this should have been done before, but I'll show you what to do now. Bear in mind make GCC and the kernel headers. So I'm gonna go Alt and I'm gonna press F2. Now as you can see that says TTY tally tally um tally type terminal two and that brings me to another logon. Now I can go back to one. You see, we have Alt F1. I'm just going to leave that screen there for now and I'm going to go back to Alt F2 and I'm going to log in again with the same name okay go to root now let's see what kernel we're running you name R okay that is the kernel that we're running so let's keep bear that in mind as well and let me see I'm going to use another command called app cache search now this is going to search the app repositories the Debian repositories for the programs that I am searching for currently searching for or that I want to find and I think let's search for Linux Linux headers. Okay, great. So let me show you a nifty neat trick now. Let me search for Linux headers dash. Now look at the tick I'm using. That tick, not the normal com um, inverted comma. I want this tick, the back, the backwards tick. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put u name space dash r and close that tick. Now if I search for this that will pull up the Linux headers for my distribution. Okay now I don't want the big mem I want the normal one. So what I'm going to do is let's go back and uh, what we're going to do now is install this install these programs and install the Linux headers that's what the program needs to actually compile the other programs or the libraries and what's not so app get install I'm going to put GCC and make GCC make and Linux headers let's go but actually before that should always run app get update and app get upgrade before you install any any programs okay that looks fine let's go back here now I just did it quickly just by pressing up because I typed it before actually and it's not that one app get install GCC make. Okay, that's app get install. G